Hello and welcome to this session of CCNP Encore series. In this session, I will discuss about enterprise access distribution block design types. So by the end of this session, you will have an understanding on one of the access distribution design type that is layer to access layer based, which is, I mean, STP based. As you know, one of the advantages of a hierarchical model is modularity. The modules are the building blocks that are assembled into the largest camp, larger campus network. So the campus network architecture is based on connection between the blocks or modules that are connected together via the core of the network. So the access distribution block is one of the block uh, also referred to as distribution block is probably the key element of the enterprise uh, campus architecture. It connects end user devices to the core network. And the access layer is typically where the engineers spend most of their time because it's where everything plugs in. Your PCs, your phones, your wireless access points, printers, etc. So properly designing the distribution block goes a long way to ensure the success and stability of your overall architecture. So there are three currently basic design choices for configuring the access distribution blocks. First is layer to access layer that which is STP based and then your layer three access layer, which is routed access. And then we have simplified campus design, design in which we use switch virtualization technologies. So while all three of these designs use uh, uh, same physical, I mean, same basic physical topology and cabling, but there are differences in where the layer two and layer three boundaries exist. So how the network topology redundancy is implemented or uh, how load balancing works. These all factors depend uh, when you make your choice. So let's start with layer two access, which is STP based. As you know, in uh, traditional LAN design, we have uh, access layer, right? Which operates at layer two and then uh, uses VLAN for traffic segmentation. Like you segment your traffic based on VLAN. And here in the access layer, you connect end devices like PCs, printers, and phone, etc. Then we have uh, distribution layer, which acts as the IP gateway for the devices to the, I mean, in the access layer. So the distribution layers uh, consists of switches that will run, run some type of uh, FHRP, such as uh, VRRP, HSRP, or GLBP protocols for high availability. Then uh, the end host use the distribution layer as their gateway. So the distribution layer will handle routing or uh, traffic aggregation, etc. Now we group this devices logically using VLANs. I mean the access layer devices. I mean the endpoints using VLANs, and the VLANs are spread across. If you see uh, across multiple switches. I mean uh, the red VLAN is VLAN 10. It is there in switch one and three, and the green VLAN is there in one, two, and four. So the <coughs> VLANs are spread across multiple switches. Now, uh, for this communication, we have uh, VLAN based trunks used to extend the subnets from the distribution switches down to the access layer and also between the distribution switches. So when you extend this VLAN uh, across multiple switches, so you will come across one big challenge that is loops. So if you, if you like uh, spread multiple VLANs across multiple switches, you will have layer two loops, right? And then uh, the solution is to use STP. STP is enabled to manage loops. So these type of design is called looped VLAN design. There are some benefits of this design, like uh, it provides greater flexibility. Uh, I mean, uh, so that you can spread your VLAN or uh, devices across multiple switches, but uh, there it comes with like uh, some limitation, right? And the limitations are like uh, it blocks some links, right? Because of STP and this uh, reduces available bandwidth. Also, it slows your convergence. Like when a topology change happens, STP takes time to recalculate the path. I would say loop designs are useful for uh, specific application or services, uh, but 
must be carefully managed to avoid performance issues such as uh, the one which we discussed. And probably you will see this design most often in many networks uh, because uh, of its flexibility. Then we have uh, another type of design. I mean, the layer two design itself, loop free design. In this type of design, we restrict each VLAN to a single access layer switch. <laughs> if you see here, uh, we have uh, like four, four types of VLAN, 10, 20, 30, 40, with different colors. So each VLAN is uh, restricted to a single switch. So it will stop, I mean, uh, the broadcast will be within that switch. And uh, it will not travel, like uh, it will be stopped at the distribution layer because if you see, there is a layer three link between uh, distribution switches. If you if you look at the previous one, uh, there was a layer two link. But now in the loop-free design, we have a layer three link, got it? So since we are using this layer three link, it will stop the layer two broadcast. So there is no loops. So that's a loop free design. And some of the benefits of this design is it's eliminates, I mean, it eliminates loops entirely. So no need for STP to block redundant path. And then uh, when you don't have uh, STP, then you have multiple links available, right? And then you can use FHRP for high availability and then use both the links. And it is simpler to manage because uh, there is no layer to loop, that means no headache. So troubleshooting becomes much easier. And then it improves stability because of the reduced risk of broadcast storms and unicast flooding, etc. But there is a trade-off. It has limited flexibility because all devices in the VLAN are restricted to only one switch. If you see here, the red VLAN is limited to only the first switch. Green VLAN is limited only to the second switch, that is VLAN 20. Similarly, other VLANs as well. So that is one of the biggest uh, trade-off plus uh, I, I mean, I think this is one of the biggest reason, I mean, uh, one of the biggest limitation. This can be a challenge for larger network because uh, in the modern network applications are like uh, users are spread across the entire network. So that is one of the drawback of this uh, layer to access loop free design. That's it for this session. I hope this was informative for you. Uh, thank you for watching and in my next session I will discuss about another access distribution design type that is layer 3 access layer based, I mean routed access. Thank you for watching. Please do like, comment, share and subscribe. And also please do not forget to check out my courses on Udemy. I'll be sharing the link in the description below. Thank you for watching.